In the digital age, data centers are the backbone of our connected world. In fact, you're using one right now to watch this video. But as our tech advances, we're becoming more and more reliant on them. And increasingly, we find ourselves asking, are data centers bad for the environment? The global pandemic led to a 30 to 35% increase in data center capacity in 2021, accredited to the rise in remote working and increased internet usage. And this trend is only going up. The global market size currently sits a little over 300 billion US dollars. And by 2030, this figure is expected to more than double. This increase in demand will create an increase in carbon emissions. Centers like these consume vast quantities of electricity through operation of the servers themselves and their industrial cooling systems. In fact, global emissions from data centers range from 2.5 to 3.7% of all global greenhouse gas emissions exceeding the emissions from all commercial flights. So what can we do about this? Researchers at the University of Massachusetts are working to address this very question with the Carbon First project. Carbon First is a project that focuses on designing large-scale computing systems in a way that reduces their carbon footprint. Carbon First takes the problem and turns it around and it asks the question, if carbon was the most important consideration, how would you redesign all these systems? Funded by the National Science Foundation, this project is a fresh look at how we operate data centers. But to begin to understand the solution, we need to define a few things. Carbon intensity. The carbon intensity of electricity is simply how much carbon was emitted for that electricity to be generated. Electricity with a high carbon intensity would be generated from a fossil fuel power source like coal or oil. Electricity with a low carbon intensity would have been generated from a renewable source, wind, solar, or hydro. Ecovisor. Ecovisor is the brains behind the operation. Ecovisor is an application that uses real-time energy network information to decide the most efficient route for a process to take. So if you wanted the application to reduce its carbon consumption, the first step of that is for the application to be aware of the carbon. If an application is connected to Ecovisor, then we define this as a carbon-aware application. So a carbon-aware application is one that's going to be responsive to changes in energy's carbon intensity and in renewable energy availability. Now that we've got the basics, let's look at the processes. Using this data, Ecovisor conducts spatio-temporal workload shifting. This is effectively two different ways in which we can reduce the carbon emissions of a single process. Firstly, let's separate this into its component parts. Spatio means space, the physical location in which the request is processed. And temporal is time, the time at which the request is processed. So imagine you're here, at home in Chicago, and you send a request to a data center. There are three data centers that could handle your request. We'll call them data centers 1, 2, and 3. In spatio workload shifting, Ecovisor looks at the data and decides which data center has the lowest carbon intensity of electricity supply in that given moment and sends the request that way. In this instance, it's cloudy and not very windy at data centers 1 and 3, but the sun is shining on data center 2 and it's running off solar energy, so the request will be sent there. This means the process has been completed on renewable energy and as a result has a lower carbon footprint. Temporal shifting is changing the time at which a process is completed. If a request is sent after the sun has set and there's no solar power in the grid, then processing that request now would be carbon intense. Instead, if the system waits until daytime and there's a greater percentage of renewables in the mix, the request will have a lower carbon footprint. Of course, this only works with lower priority requests, but a small wait on the completion of this process is a small price to pay for a significantly lower environmental impact. The historical data collected during these calculations is yet another tool in the decarbonization toolbox. Researchers at UMass can use this information to forecast the carbon intensity of an area's power supply, further increasing the efficiency of those data centers over the coming days. Energy drives the environmental impact of computing. It also drives the monetary cost of computing. And so being able to manage both of those things is crucial to scaling computing up as we move forward into the future. For more news on science and technology, subscribe to One World Network.